Hi, I'm explaining the monopoly model. And to start our monopoly model, we're going to have a supply and demand curve diagram. So we've got the quantity on the x-axis. We've got the price on the y-axis. And we've got a demand curve, which is simply um, a relationship between price and quantity that people will demand. So if you raise the price, people are going to demand fewer of a product. That's all that's captured in a de demand curve. And here's a, the beginning of our demand curve. So person number one, the person located right here on this model, they're willing to pay $20 for the product. Person number two, which is located right here, they're willing to pay $19 for the product. Person number three is willing to pay $18, and so on and so forth. Um, we also have a marginal cost curve, and you can think of that as for every unit that the company produces, if it's cupcakes, they need a little bit of sugar and a little bit of flour, so there's this marginal cost of producing every unit of an item. And the marginal costs always have this um, upward shape. There's increasing marginal costs for re reasons that I can explain elsewhere if you would like to know. We also keep in mind that because this is a monopoly, um, this is the same diagram as the firm diagram and also the industry diagram. That's just really the definition of a monopolist. So the purpose of our model is that we want to know what is the price and what is the quantity that this monopolist will charge. And to do that, we're going to refer to our golden rule in economics, which is marginal cost equals marginal benefit. And for each situation, we have to define marginal cost and marginal benefit in the particular situation. Marginal cost, of course, here is just the cost of marginal cost to produce one extra cupcake, so the extra flour and sugar and eggs we need. That's going to be our marginal cost. Marginal benefit is actually going to be our marginal revenue. So for each extra cupcake we make, how much extra do we bring in in cash um, based on the price and, and the quantity? So we can. Um, we can find our marginal cost pretty easily. We've, we've already mapped that on the graph. That's sort of something that's given to you to begin with. But we're going to have to calculate our marginal revenue curve. And first I'll show you the curve, and then I'll explain why it has this shape. So with a linear demand curve, the marginal revenue curve is going to shoot off kind of like this, about halfway in between the demand curve and the axis. That's going to be our marginal revenue curve. So why does it have that shape? Well, um, for the first person, we, we noted that the first person was willing to pay $20 for this product. Um, so the total revenue with just one item sold is going to be $20. Um, if we want to sell two items, we're actually going to have to lower the price to $19 because that second person is not willing to pay $20. They'll only pay $19. So um, we have $38 total in revenue if we sell two products. If we sell three products, we have to lower the price to 18. So 18 times 3 is 54. And the marginal revenue is simply the extra revenue going from 1 to 2 to 3 people. So for going from 0 to 1, we get $20 extra. Going from 1 to 2, we see that we only get $18 extra. And one way of thinking of that is we get this extra $19 from the second person that we sell a cupcake to. But we also have to lower the price of the first person's cupcake from $20 down to $19. So we lose that extra dollar, and we only get $18 in marginal revenue. Um, here, our marginal revenue is going to be $16, going from the $38 to the $54. And the same principle applies. If we want to sell that third cupcake, we have to lower the price to $18. So we get the $18 extra from selling that third cupcake, but we also have to reduce the price of the first two people's cupcakes by a dollar. So we, we lose a couple more dollars. And that's why the demand, the, the marginal revenue curve shoots off the demand curve like it does. So now we're going to apply our rule to decide the quantity of cupcakes that this firm is going to um, produce. And we know the quantity should happen when marginal costs equals marginal revenue, so we can find our marginal cost curve and our marginal revenue curve. And the quantity where those meet is going to be the optimal quantity for a, a monopolist to produce. So what price are they going to charge at that quantity? Well, they're going to charge the highest price possible. That's always what monopolists do. So the price they're going to charge is going to be way up here on the demand curve. To sell all these products, if they charge this price, all of those products will sell. And that's the highest price for which that's, that is true. So 
the price here and the quantity can be derived in that way. So it's a fairly simple model, but a very powerful model in terms of the intuition it offers. And I'll explain the intuition in a different video.